So I found this post here in this uh, paddock and it's covered in bones and wool. I would wager that an eagle or some kind of other predatory bird has landed here, put its prey down and with a baby lamb or something and this is where it's just been perching and eating it. Very cool. Such is the circle of life. Hey everyone, this is just a short video on a very quick little hunt that I went on recently. I'm fortunate enough that it was quite successful. I managed to get a deer down and some other interesting things happened. You'll see here that I'm just taking the last corner to get down onto the property. And just coming up this hill here, I spot a couple of foxes on the road. Unfortunately, I obviously wasn't able to uh, do anything about it because everything's locked away sec securely and uh, legally but it just goes to show how prolific this problem is with foxes across uh, New South Wales anyway let's get into it so when you're hunting on private property unlike uh, state forests most hunting usually happens in the late evenings and at night uh, and through the night uh, whereas with state forests you can only hunt during the daytime I think it's something like half an hour before sunrise and then half an hour after sunset I don't know that that's a fact so don't quote me on that so just hanging around in this smaller paddock uh, where all the tools and everything are and I just noticed these beautiful birds coming and hanging out right next to me you know just a few meters away so I thought I'd set up the camera and just watch them it's, it's absolutely beautiful not everything went to plan in this trip I had a very interesting uh, ride home to say the least so make sure you watch to the end uh, to find out how it all went later that evening I was driving down to the spot where I wanted to set up and uh, point the light out to the left and I noticed two googly eyes <laughs> staring at me I immediately pull over and take the shot and it's just this monster of a fox My goodness, I shot this guy at about 120-ish meters. That's probably a new record for size because that's tall. I don't know. Uh, I'm, I'm 180 and that top of that post comes, uh, the top of the post there, yeah, it comes up to my chest. That guy goes from the top of the post to the floor. He's big. I'll have to walk in there to find him. Alright. Let's see what else we can find. Guys, I managed to get a deer down by sneaking up on it with my red lights. It did not get fussed. It didn't mind me getting close. So I got from about 250 meters down to about 100 meters. And I'm in focus. There it is. shot placement right there. All right, I'm gonna have to carry you back. Turn off my phone. I actually looked it up and measured the distance just simply using Google Maps from where I started walking in the dark and then where I took the shot from. So the shot was close enough to 100 meters give or take a couple of meters but it was actually about 300 meters that I started walking in. Being that it was in the complete darkness and using only the red light on my head with the O-Light array. I am surprised and impressed that the deer didn't see me at all uh, sneaking up on it. 
Um, you, and there's no trees in this paddock. It's completely open. So the fact that it let me get so close uh, is something that yeah, bo is both surprising and pleasing at the same time. Change of plans. I'm going to leave my baton with the deer. I'm going to go get my car and come back. It's a bit of a walk. I don't know if you can see it there, but uh, the light is right there on the floor and it makes it really easy for me to find it. I don't even have to have my headlights on and you can see that little dot in the middle there. So this just makes it tray easy for me. Here we go. Back at the old deer. Time to get to work. Quick shout out to my channel sponsor, Olight, and just show you this Olight prowess. It's a flashlight that also has a lamp on the back of it, which I'll uh, demo in a moment. I haven't been doing any unboxings lately, but I wanted to show you this one because even though my camera setup has stuffed up a little bit, there's actually quite a few things in the box here. So it comes with a carrier, a USB-C charger cable, and this nifty base. So the base is meant to hold it in magnetically and allows you to stand it up on a table and also charge it just by sliding it in. But the base actually also has a little screw-in hole, so you can screw that into something like a tripod or a camera stand or uh, even a GoPro stand. And that way you can set it up to act as a lantern. I guess this probably would have come in handy when I was butchering this deer as you'll see in a sec. Specs on this thing are interesting. It goes from moonlight mode, which is 5 lumens, all the way up to turbo, which is 5,000 lumens. I think the 5,000 lumens runs for about 3 minutes, and then it drops back down to 1,200 lumens, which is high, and the 1,200 lasts for 140 minutes. But with that kind of throw, you'll get about 245 meters. One thing I noticed about this is that it's quite a broad beam. It's more like a seeker, or even the baton. It's not very focused, like the javelot. And the Javelot Pro. So this is the lantern. You press it to turn it on and then hold it down to change the different brightnesses. Double clicking on it will make the lantern go to turbo mode. And then when you hold it down again, drop it all the way down to the lowest brightness setting. It will blink once to let you know that's the lowest. There's a little switch here that lets you flick between flashlight mode and lantern mode. I think it's nifty. And uh, by the time this video goes live, it will be on sale with the link in the description. Let's get back to the video. Warning, you are about to watch me butcher a deer. This is a warning for anyone who might feel squeamish or doesn't feel comfortable in watching an animal be butchered for food. I'm about to butcher this deer because I obviously want to harvest the meat for the farmer whom, I hope, will thoroughly enjoy the meat. This is just one of the many ways that hunters across Australia can give back to the landowners and further express our gratitude for the opportunity to do this. Deer are a feral pest in Australia and cause countless problems for our native flora. If you're not into this or are not keen on seeing something like this, just uh, press stop and... Uh, come back later or fast forward to skip to the next bit. So this is actually my first attempt at butchering solo and it just goes to show that the very best way to learn this stuff is to just get stuck into it. Um, there are a few things that you need to be mindful of. For example, make sure that you don't puncture the gut or the stomach area as you don't want to dirty the meat inside the animal. You also want to use this tool called butt out and what it does is uh, literally that you insert it into the bottom of the animal, quite literally, and then you pull it out and it removes the uh, anus with it. Ooh. Brother, ooh. what's that? What's that, brother? And it just makes life easier uh, so that when you're butchering the insides, you don't have to worry about further contaminating the meat. I left mine at, back at the base camp on this occasion, so uh, I did this later on in the evening after I hung it up. I have to finish it up the camp. Oh, he's a heavy boy. And he's full of blood. Um, and finally, just make sure that you practice your knife sharpening skills. It will make your life a lot easier. And then... Alrighty. He's on there.
So I totally forgot to film me hanging the deer up with this uh, hook that I use. Notice I'm using basically a snatch block, a pulley system at the top there, and that just makes it easier for me to lift this thing up. It's just so heavy for an individual, without, you know, something half decent to, to lift it up with. Anyway, I uh, hung it up, skinned it, finished cleaning out the insides a little bit, just patting it down with some uh, paper towels, and then wrapped it because the intention is to leave it hanging here for a while, maybe a week or two. The farmer then will probably just move it into a cool room or something like that to be able to uh, finish processing the rest of the meat. From here I pretty much, uh, it was already pretty late at night so I had pretty much packed up and, and went to bed. Got up early in the morning and started heading out and you know ordinarily this is just you know beautiful drive home before sunrise but on this occasion the car started doing some weird stuff. <laughs> the radio started turning off, my lights started to dim, you know the car slowed down and uh, all the lights started coming on all of my, uh, you know, my, my engine light, battery light started coming on. And then it just died on me. Yeah, it was a dead alternator. So even though I could start the car up, it just wouldn't run. On a positive note, I ended up in an absolutely beautiful location. Got to watch the sunrise while I waited for the tow truck. And I have to say a massive, massive thank you to NRMA <laughs> Roadside Assistance. If you are planning on uh, doing some solo adventures, make sure that you do have, um, and even if you're going with a group, make sure that you do have NRMA's Roadside Assistance. And you know, my advice would be get the premium subscription. Uh, this is not sponsored by them in any way. I'm just so impressed by the service that they provided. You know, they came and sent a tow truck got me towed off the road because I was blocking the road at the start. Had someone come out, come out and look at the car, managed to confirm that it is in fact the alternator that was dead and so they towed me all the way back to Sydney. It was about 280 kilometers just from the server where they towed me to back to Sydney, not including getting me to the actual service station. My intention was to get home around 8 a.m. that morning and I ended up getting home at about 8 o'clock at night but it was still a great adventure. The guys at the towing company see there you know all states again it's not sponsored but incredibly incredibly helpful you know very caring people they tried to do everything they could they towed my car and towed my trailer and got me home safely all in the same day so yeah that's the end of this adventure <laughs> thank you so much for watching thanks for sticking around to the end please do me a favor and subscribe i'll see you all next time hugs and puppies